Hello everyone. Today in this module we are going to talk about a class of plant hormones known as gibberellins or GA. Gibberellin was first recognized by a Japanese scientist while working on the foolish seedling disease of rice in 1926. Later in 1935 it was first isolated from a fungi. Gibberellins have multiple roles to play in plants growth and development. Over 125 structural forms of gibberellin are known today and are numbered in the order of its discovery. In this module let's study how gibberellins are formed by plants and how they act at molecular level in order to regulate plants growth and development. The learning objectives of this module are the roles of gibberellin, dwarf mutants, gibberellin's biosynthesis and signaling pathway. Gibberellins were discovered as plant growth promoting compounds produced by a pathogenic fungi gibberella fugicorae which brought about a rapid increase in the height of infected ripe plants. In the 50s, gibberellins were shown to be synthesized by almost all plants and over 125 structural forms of gibberellins are known today. These hormones played an important role in plant growth, especially during developmental phases, during germination or flowering. At the cellular level, gibberellins bring about an increase in cell size and have an important application in horticulture as chemicals that cause enlargement of leaves, flowers and fruits. Gibberellins are synthesized by the terpenoid biosynthesis pathway in which larger molecules are built up by the 5 carbon compound isopentyl diphosphate or IPP. 4 units of IPP form the 20 carbon diterpenoid gyrinyl gyrinyl diphosphate GGPP. The first committed step in gibberellin biosynthesis is the formation of ent copalyl diphosphate from GGPP by the plastidic enzyme copalyl diphosphate synthase or CPS. This cyclized diterpine is further converted to the tetracyclic compound ent corine by corinine synthase KS. Corine then moves out of the plastid and is oxidized by cytochrome P450 monooxygenase called corinine oxidases. Corine then moves out of the plastid and is oxidized by cytochrome P450 monooxygenases called corine oxidases. The main changes occurring during these steps is the conversion of the second ring from a 6 carbon to a 5 membered ring to form the typical gibberellin skeleton. The first gibberellin synthesized is GA12 or its hydroxylated form at the 13th carbon namely GA53. The conversions are carried out by cytosolic deoxygenases and mainly consist of oxidations at C20 that result in the formation of C19 GAs like GA9 or GA20 which show the presence of a lactone ring. Further oxidation leads to the third carbon hydroxylated products GA1 and GA4. Presence of the lactone ring and hydroxylation at the third carbon are important steps which lead to formation of bioactive GAs. On the other hand, hydroxylation at the second carbon converts the bioactive GAs to inactive forms namely GA34 and GA8. GA activity is therefore regulated 
by the expression and activity of three oxidases GA20 oxidases, GA3 oxidases and GA2 oxidases. Enzymes in the gibberellin biosynthesis pathway were identified by isolation of dwarf mutants that arose due to GA deficiency. For example, the mutants CPS showed a defect in the enzyme copolyl diphosphate synthase. The mutant could be restored to wild type by exogenous application of gibberellin. However, some of the dwarf mutants could not be restored to wild type plants by exogenous application of gibberellins. However, some of the dwarf mutants could not be restored to wild type plants by exogenous application of gibberellins and arose due to defects in the gibberellin signaling pathway. One such mutant, GA insensitive dwarf or GET1, led to the discovery of a GA receptor, while another mutant, GET2, led to the discovery that GA signaling involved proteosomes mediated degradation of depressors. Another mutant, slender rice or SLR1, showed a constitutive GA response phenotype and coded for a DELA protein that acts as a repressor of GA responses to the wild type plants. These and other mutants in the GA signaling pathway lead to the discovery of a model for GA signaling. When the concentration of bioactive GA is low, GA response genes are not expressed due to the binding of transcription factors like phytochrome interacting factor PIF3 and 4 to DELA proteins instead of binding to the promoters of GA response genes. When GA concentration increases, it binds to its receptor GID1. The GA-GID1 complex then binds to DELA proteins like GA1, RGA, RGL. This changes the conformation of DELA proteins and the GA-GID1 DELA complex is loaded on to the ubiquitin E3 ligase having GID2 as the F-box protein. The E3 ligase then ubiquitinates the DELA protein and marks it for proteosome mediated degradation. The freed transcription factor PIF3 and 4 is now able to bind to the promoter of GA response genes and bring about their transcription. Besides PIFs that regulate response like germination and photomorphogenesis, GA also regulates the activity of other transcription factors involved in plant growth and development. Let us study the role of GA in the important developmental processes of flowering in more details. <clears throat> Let us study the role of GA in the important developmental processes of flowering in more detail. Under inductive photoperiod conditions, phytochrome mediates expression of the key flowering integrator constants which produces the expression of FT. FT is the mobile signal that moves to the shoot apical meristem to induce flowering as mentioned in the module on photoperiodism. Phytochrome is also known to induce expression of GA biosynthesis gene GA20OX in the leaf which results in increased GA concentration. GA is also known to move to shoot apex like FT where it activates transcription of the floral integrator SOC1 and the floral meristem gene leafy. Activation of GA occurs through GA mediated degradation of DELA proteins that repress these genes. Although another pathway, GA plays an important role in the initiation of flowering under non-inductive conditions. Under such conditions, the GA pathway 
leads to direct regulation of SOC1 and LEAFY. Exogenous application of GA can also compensate for the unfavorable photo period or cold temperature requirement in initiating flowering. This makes the hormone very useful in horticulture and floriculture. To summarize, we can say that GA is an important plant growth promoting hormone. Semi dwarf GA mutants showing defective Della proteins are GA insensitive. The use of GA in agriculture made food security possible in India, leading to green revolution. GA is also widely commercially used in increasing the size of fruits, flowers, and leaves. Thank you.